Well, hi, good morning. Thank you for joining me in my shop here. It is October 31st. It's Halloween today. And I woke up this morning, snow on the ground, just a little bit. But it didn't uh, melt away. It's still out there. Oh boy. How do you like that? Snow on the ground already. So, last video uh, went pretty well. I feel like I'm starting to get an idea of what is going on with this radio. I uh, corrected my false notions about this resistor down here. Discovered a wire I hadn't seen the whole time I've been working on the radio. Uh, put a capacitor in from its incorrect location to its correct location. Um, things are going pretty good. So, let's keep going. Now, there's another capacitor that appears to be missing in action. And it's a 0.1 capacitor. It should be located down in this area somewhere. It's not this one. So we're going to look into that. We're going to start with the schematic, and I'll identify exactly which capacitor I'm talking about, and we'll start the hunt. Okay, so the capacitor I am talking about, my mouse has stopped working again, here we go, is this one right here. 0.1 microfarads connected uh, at the bottom of the, uh, the grid resistor here over to a, over to the same place as this one. Oh, okay, well we know where that is. There's nothing there. And it's supposed to go to the bottom of the of, of, of this resistor, right? So we have to find this resistor. And it's a uh, voltage divider here. Interestingly enough, uh, 60,000 ohms here and half a million there. So this would be um, 5 is uh, um, gr uh, green and 6 is blue I think. Six is blue. Let's look for a blue and a green resistor with some, somewhere in this area. Uh, well we can find it tied to the grid here. Oh wait a minute I know where these two are. are these? No that's these two. These two are up on the resistor board. Where are these two? Hey let's look in the in the uh, part thing even though it's 14. Looking for 14. I'm looking in here right away. Yeah there's 14. 14 is here. Uh, was it 14 and 16? Did I have, what's going on here? 13 and 16? What about 13 and 15? Did I make some kind of mistake before? There's 13. No. Uh, no. 13 and 15 are here and here. And then the, I forgot the numbers already. 14 and 16. 14 and 16. 14 is here. 16. And one leg is there. Where's the other? Here. So so it's the same sort of deal. So we have, here we have a resistor and then we have one on an angle. Here we have a resistor and then one on an angle again. And the big capacitor is supposed to connect here. That would be C30. C30. No, C30 go to here. Well, see, this is the same point. So it could go here, or it could go all the way to here. I could put a C30 from here to here, or, or, or here to here. Wherever I like. C30. Okay, let's look back at the radio now. I think I've got this in my head. Okay, so we should have a resistor comes across, and then rather than going straight across, turns up this way. So this connection there should be a point one, which runs, say, to here. Okay, so now 
<laughs> really? Should I really put one in there? The radio's working without it? Um, let, let's see if we can sort out what it what it's doing. I mean, there's a big one way up here, but this is this is attached to a different tube. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be that it's missing entirely. Look at it again on the schematic. I'm trying to identify what it's doing. So uh, it's providing a near ground. Funny that it doesn't run right to the ground, to me. But that they did this instead of bringing it down here, or I, I guess in effect bypass this. Why? Why would they even do this? Why? Why would they like uh, many radios? It's just a resistor here goes right to the ground. This one instead has a voltage divider with a capacitor tying back to the cathode. Well, would that be feedback? That wouldn't be feedback, would it? Feedback from feedback? I don't think you can feed back from here. You feed back from the plate, not from the cathode. Okay, so I don't understand why this is here. It's a big capacitor. It's there for, it's important that it be there according to, you know, sort of. <laughs> If you believe this schematic here is correct, then yeah, this is an important capacitor. We shouldn't be without it. What would happen if you didn't have it? So then you'd have a 560,000 ohms to ground. And uh, so what? I don't know, that's a strange capacitor. What's it doing? I'm okay, so I'm going to do a little research, see if I can figure out what the reason might be for this capacitor to be there uh, on the schematic. And I'm going to drink some coffee. Good. Well, um, frankly, I can't explain uh, what they're doing here. Um, looked at my books. The books I have all show the same very simple arrangement here. They, it's as if they took what is in most radios to be one continuous resistor here and one continuous resistor here, split them in two, and then rather than, and, and from here I can't explain why, they would split them in two and then connect both of these points to the cathode of the tube. Don't know what they're up to. Okay, so we're gonna leave it at that. I don't know what they're up to here. I mean, I have some guesses, but I, you know, I don't know if they're really sensible or not, not even worth thinking more about. So the uh, issue here is, uh, for me, uh, what am I going to do? Am I going to install this? Uh, the radio appears to not have it and appears to be working fine. Why would I bother installing it? Perhaps what I can do is I can do a temporary installation here. And I, I, I can sort of put the capacitor in and take it out, and we'll see what the difference is in the operation of the radio. <clears throat> uh, my expectation is it would get louder with the capacitor in. Uh, but it's pretty loud as it is. Okay, I think I'm going to do this experiment. I'm going to find out where the connection points are for this. Let's see, one is the cathode, and the other one is the bottom of this resistor, R14. And we're going to hook up a capacitor in there somehow and then experiment a bit and see what happens. Okay, here's what we'll try. I'm going to take my capacitor substitution box, that's this part here, dial up a very small capacitor. The size that's recommended in the schematic is there. I can even go a bit bigger if I wanted to. That's a point 0.1 right there. Is it really a point 0.1? Uh, you know what? I better check because I have not gone inside this little box yet to find out what's going on in there. So we'll set this to point point one on the box, and uh, I'm assuming the capacitor's in there. 
can take the voltage, the voltage here, uh, I might be subjecting this to, I don't know, a couple hundred volts at most, I think. Probably, probably a lot less. So it says it's 121 nanofarads. So that would be a 0.12. It's probably a little leaky. There's probably old capacitors in here. But uh, it's not dead going to do the trick from, from an experimental point of view. Now we're going to hook this up, set this to small size, and we're going to hook this up just as it showed here, and the other terminal was in the middle here. That be it. So first I think I'm going to have it disconnected, we'll get the radio operating, then I can do this kind of thing. Maybe even look at the voltage there if I'm a little nervous. Oh, let's get her going here. A quick safety check. All is good. Oh, hear the hum. It's a pounding hum. Just listening to the hum. So the low, low, deep hum did dissipate away. There's a, a higher pitched hum in here now, but okay. Now let me put this on here. And see what happens. No change. I'm going to advance this now to half the size, so 0 0.05 instead of a 0 0.1. There's some kind of change there. 0 0.1, what it's talking about. need to do here is have have some music playing or something some kind of station on here I'm gonna have to go and throw a switch Let me turn on the antenna because I'm sure it's not turned on down here even with it even with it not turned on My impression is that absolutely nothing changed in the radio's operation. Put that capacitor in or take it out. Um, so for now, I'm going to leave it out since it doesn't seem to be having any benefit to putting it in. And the uh, radio's operating. And there could be some. Maybe it's not supposed to be in. Maybe that schematic's not right. Maybe it has a relationship to the changed tube, the alternate tube that's up here, and that doesn't match the schematic. I kind of doubt that. Uh, okay, so that's settled. I'll just keep it in mind, but I won't worry about it now. Let's just turn this off before I stick my fingers in it. And uh, Okay, um, next one to do, I think, uh, is this big guy here.
Now the last point one turned out to be in pretty good shape. Uh, let's, take, let's cut this one out and we'll just see. First of all, the clip lead. Okay. straight to the chassis. That's where it's supposed to go. Oh, be following me. Who's following me? something I can work on yeah um, just hold on one second here okay. and that phone call is why I put clip leads on when I'm cutting out parts because I never know what's gonna happen and sure enough I cut this part out ran to answer my phone if I hadn't put this on here chance of me making an error goes up point one 600 volts appears to be in good shape let's see what the capacitor tester has to say about that. Now wait a minute, am, am I the capacitor tester? Or is the machine the capacitor tester? I guess it's a combination. I'm a human being augmented by technology. Okay, 50 volts, watching the eye. What does it do? That's uh, like the other one. It's opening up a fair bit. 150 volts, not gonna do it. So, somewhat leaky. Uh, this was, this is a bypass. I believe I remember right, a bypass capacitor, probably a little bit of a leak, doesn't really matter. Um, why don't we just, for fun, just for fun and pleasure, we'll put it on this tester. See what it says. What's the guess? My guess is it's going to say it's a little more than 0.1. I'm going to guess it's 0 0.13. 0 0.13, that's my guess. Okay, here we go like a game show. Point one one five. I said point one three. So it's reading a little high, but this doesn't paint a terrible terrible picture of this capacitor either. You never know. You just you just never know. But uh, certainly good to replace it. There's no doubt about that. So point one six hundred volts. In this position, it is a by pass what is it doing in here um, let's see if we can find out and uh, to do that first I got to look uh, on this diagram so we look on this diagram this might be a dangerous thing right here looking at this diagram so the point one is uh, now this is on the tube that is not the same one as in the schematic so this isn't going to work at all 
because let's just do this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pin tube here. But in the radio, it's a six pin tube. So there's no relationship uh, between this diagram and the actual insides of the radio. So here's a point one though. Point one to ground. This has got to be the capacitor I just grabbed. C20. And you know what? They've actually written the uh, interesting here. They've written the word shell, heater, plate, signal grid, and the point one suppressor. Suppressor? Oh, it must be. They've called it suppressor, but I'll bet you it's actually the suppressor and the cathode combined inside this tube. This is the wrong tube, though, but we're just looking at what's going on on the diagram here. It's because because here's the cathode resistor, and this 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 would be a bypass capacitor. A great big fat bypass capacitor. So we go up here, and we say... Which tube was it? It's this tube that's different. There's the point one and C20 right there. Bypass. So almost no voltage across this. So I can put a, a lower voltage. You don't need a 600 volt capacitor there. That's kind of a waste. Why would they put a 600 volt across that? They had a surplus in the warehouse. Their uh, stocking guidelines said don't get too many sizes of capacitors in here. Because same thing over here. This I'm pretty sure this was a 600 volt capacitor. Odd. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to put a bypass in to replace the one I just took out. Yeah, and a leak in here. This just not going to be important in this arrangement. There's not much voltage here pushing on it. It's just nothing. So this this probably won't have any impact on the radio's operation. We should check this resistor too. Oh, I did already. I did in the past, my past life. Okay, we'll just replace the capacitor there. So I've replaced that very large capacitor with a little tiny guy here. Still 0.1 microfarads. Um, I don't think there'll be a problem, but perhaps we'll measure the voltage across there if I can think of it next time I turn the radio on. Now, Who's next? Uh, well, there's uh, a capacitor under here. You can see a little bit of the end of it sticking out. One up here. Why don't we look at what these two are doing and look at replacing those. And, and all that will be left is this on the board. This is the tone capacitor. It's, it's not very important and the tone control is working. So let's look at these other two that are on here. Let's start with this top one. The lead is all bent in here. Hmm. That's not normal. That kind of, uh, yeah. Okay, we, we can make up stories about that. Let's take a look at the uh, schematic here. Actually, we'll start with the layout diagram. As soon as I can get my mouse operating here, what has happened again? There he is. Well, let's go, where to go? What's going on? I had a lot of trouble with this. Uh, okay. Not getting anywhere here with my. Maybe my mouse batteries are low. give me an awful lot of trouble here and I don't want to deal with it right now while I'm doing this and now I've got the schematic on here oh, oh, oh. oh yeah that's right I actually forgot what we were even doing okay here we are so one capacitor is going to be C25 it goes from here to here that's the first one we want to look at well, let's just look at that one C25 what's it hooked up to it's hooked up to volume control is it the center of the volume control? Red. Why it is. So this capacitor is carrying the entire audio signal. And pro 
probably runs from here. I'm seeing my mouse is sticking. Uh, runs from here on a shielded cable. Up, oh, that's the grid cap. Okay, well, uh, okay, well, that, that's what this guy is then. He's, uh, let's find it on the schematic just for fun. Just for, for fun and pleasure. So we'll go up here. And what were we looking for? We were looking for C. I forgot the number. My mouse is sticking. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Mouse is stuck. Here we go. Uh, 25. 25. Come on, let's go. 25. You can do it. Come on, mouse. You can do it. Come on, I'm, I'm on your side. I don't understand what's going on with this guy, this mouse. C25. Do you see C25? There it is. Well, it's right where it's supposed to be. Right on the output of the volume control potentiometer. And then it connects to, the, to a shielded cable and runs up to the grid. So straightforward, 0 0.005, let's change out that capacitor. Okay, good. Let's change them out. We'll give them the test. Maybe I'll just test them with the uh, So we can tell if the capacitor is seriously leaky because the reading will be higher than the rating on the capacitor, 0 0.005, which is what it should be. So, oh, this is reading way low, isn't it? 6,000 picofarads, which is six, well, no, that's 0 0.00. 68 is what that is instead of 0 0.005 so it's reading a little high so probably a little leaky would that be important in this position it might be you know let's go back and just look at the uh, schematic again just to check out that oh, thank god my mouse worked okay so if this was leaky then some voltage on this side could work its way Look at this, 2 mega ohms, not going that way. It's going to work its way up. It's going to put a charge on the grid. So any leak here could put a charge. Now how much voltage is over here? That's a good question. So we will, we will, we will track back. So here's the big resistor leading off to the AVC. Here's the AVC filter, capacitor. We come up here, come up here, big resistor. So no capacitor in the way. So DC can make it all the way down through the volume control, even through this resistor, down to ground. That's another interesting connection above the... Uh... Huh. Okay, don't, don't, don't say anymore. So uh, yeah, a little leak and this side would go up in voltage because of this big resistor here is not going to draw much current or drop much charge out of this line so leak here bias off up here but the actual biasing of this tube is done by cathode biasing but this wouldn't now we could measure this we could measure this jim you can measure this you got a good meter why don't you measure it and see what's happening i've already cut it out that's why <laughs> It's too late for that already. Ah, that was a mistake. Uh, I, I like experimenting here. I missed an opportunity. I'm not going to put it back in and do it. We'll just change, change it now. 0 0.005. Oh, well, okay. You know, there is something interesting here uh, to take a look at. And that is this tap on the volume control. Engineers have a great time with this stuff. What did this guy do? He took this tap and he ran it through a big resistor up up to the grid 
So this grid's getting its signal from the transformer here, but it's also getting some signal from down here. Now what's it getting? It's getting... Uh, uh, so there's a filter here, 300 picofarad filter, so there shouldn't be a lot of RF coming down here. Um, is it what's, it, what's it getting here? It's possible it's getting some feedback, but I, I, I kind of doubt it. I've never seen it done like this. Feedback usually comes from right out here. This is where you're concerned about harmonics and you want to clean this up. No use cleaning things up back here and leaving them all messed up there. So I don't think it's feedback. I think it's uh, AVC. Uh, the 2 meg here is similar to the 1 meg here and what, what they're doing is they're taking I think it would be less of the AVC voltage up through this way so I think that's what that is and a higher AVC voltage is heading out this way that's what I think that is okay back to uh, changing the well, 0 0.005 what kind of voltage is on this across this it can't be much of anything can't can't be much of anything. Would be it's the output side here. So uh, nothing much. Okay, I'm gonna put a zero zero five into there. Okay, got that guy in. Now this last one down here. Should kind of buried it under here. running from this pin over to like the same one as the uh, tone control yeah okay so let's take a look we can probably knock both these off actually let's take a look at the schematic here on lots of phone calls this morning people with broken stuff um, okay what, what am I doing now Focus on what you're doing. So we want to start by looking down here. And the capacitor we're going after is this one right here. Yep, that matches perfectly. It's a point, it's another point zero zero five. And uh, it's hooked up to R15 according to this. And hooked up to C31, which is sitting right here, not on the diagram. And ultimately hooked up to the plate of the output tube. So this guy, I think I know which one this is, C32. C32 right here. So this one is basically between the plate and uh, the power supply coming in. And its job is to quell any high frequency harmonics, audio harmonics that have been generated within this tube. And I guess this guy too. Um, so this one in particular uh, can produce uh, harmonics. You don't want to hear them. Uh, harmonics are uh, high enough. We can drain them off here. Actually, they're above your hearing. They could be above your hearing. So, uh, so the effect this one has, you may not notice it. I suppose it would, uh, you put too big a capacitor in here, you're going to muffle the sound, you're going to reduce the trouble, I would think. So we'll put exactly what it says, 0 0.005. And the voltage here, well, see, it's sitting right across this, this guy, um, 450 ohms, uh, probably no more than 100 volts. It depends on the voltage of the screen and the plate and the difference between them. Uh, it's probably not even that. It's probably much less. If I put a 100 volt re uh, capacitor in there, we're doing good. I believe. Very good. Oh. Okay, I've cut the leads on this capacitor. Point zero zero six. It didn't say 005 on the uh, schematic. I'm going to take a peek myself. I'm just going to take a quick peek. 
it says five there's no doubt it says five how did a six get in here well, probably doesn't really make much difference at all uh, we could put in a five or a six okay oh we want to test this that's right that's right we want to give them the test I turned off the tester Okay, I'm whispering to myself. I hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> here, we, here we go. I kind of forget that I'm recording things. 50 volts, what do you do? Pop right open. 150. Ooh, this one's really doing good. Let's give it the 250 test. This is like uh, in great shape. How come you're so good? 0 0.006. Let's measure the capacitance. So a point zero zero six is going to be on this scale, I believe, right there. Okay, so we're on the point zero zero one scale, which is this middle scale. So it'd be point zero zero five. So it's right on. I notice the eye doesn't open quite all the way during the test, which I think indicates that it's leaky a little bit, but I'm not sure of that. But anyway, nothing terribly wrong with this capacitor. And in, 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 yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put the new one in there. And uh, I might as well change this one out at the same time. This is just the tone capacitor. It's a big guy. How come so big there? Okay, away I go. Okay, new capacitor is in. I haven't soldered it yet. I have the tone capacitor in my hand here. And uh, I, I don't know that I can read anything on it. Where's my little, oh, so important magnifier here? It has a serial number on it, it's like a Philco capacitor, no other information. Here's the thing, the schematic shows this to be a 0 0.017 capacitor, but look at the size of it. Really? 0 0.017? Now, I don't know the condition of it, it doesn't look great, but most capacitors have been so-so in this radio. Let's see what this test tells us about it. 0 0.017, eh? So, uh, 21 nanofarads. So this is a 0 0.021, or 0 0.017 is pretty close, isn't it? And with a little bit of a leak, the capacitor reading goes up a bit, so I believe. So there you are, 0 0.017, great big thing. Why so big? Maybe these were extra old in their warehouse and they wanted to get rid of them. I've had them in there for seven years. Bob, can't you use them in your radio? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 0.017. Well, that's what I'll stick in there. I'll stick a 0 0.017 or the closest thing I can get. That's a weird number. So why the big, big capacitor here? Well, it's small capacity, high voltage in there. Uh, this is probably a 600 volt capacitor. The voltage typically is going to be 200, and, well, according to the schematic, 235 volts on this guy. So that's why he's big. And the one I've put in there is a 600 volt capacitor, the yellow one you can barely see. Make sure everything is soldered here. This is not soldered here. Looked like it, but it's not. I attempted to solder it, but it didn't work.
apparently there's a repair shop here in Aurelia that if you come in and say, oh, this isn't even switched on. No, wait a minute, that's not. <laughs> Two things at once. You, if you come in and go, I've got a Bose stereo from the 1990s, so it's not working. Can you fix it? They say no, and then they give people my phone number. <laughs> well, I'm not going to fix any Bose stereo from the 90s. That says something too, if people are having trouble with those. Shouldn't be having trouble with things from the 90s, that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, I think that's soldered now. Yeah. Okay, all is good. Time for a test. Time for a test of the radio. Okay. Okay, time to give the radio a pretty good test. Now, this time I have the antenna switched on. Yes, it is. There we go. Okay, dim bulb reaction is good. Yeah, give it the full voltage. I hear the hum. Hum. hum is changing. The deeper hum is gone now. Oh no. No, no. Quite a powerful hum there. The hum could be sourced from a tube. It could be coming from a tube itself. Yeah, it's definitely humming away here. Okay, well let's carry on with, the, hey, what happens if we do the tone thing now? Well, there's nothing here to hear. It doesn't sound like it's doing a thing. Let's tune some stuff in. Oh, yeah. Hum is more intense, if anything, I think. So we're using my newfangled point antenna. In the past it was impossible to pick this station up here in my shop. I'll take that back. This is the station. So, I believe this is 680 and it's pretty close to 680 on the dial. 680, 640. This is probably 740 from Toronto. It's probably a little, a little bit of 820 from Hamilton. Eight sixty. Pretty good. Oh, there's a station way up here we might be able to get. Let's try it. Ooh, what's that? I don't know what that is. Something something in my house. So there you know, until I made the change to my computer, I got rid of these terribly noisy computers in my house and an improved antenna I would never be able to pick this up here in my shop during the day no matter what I did wonderful that's probably an American station I don't know that it was American it's just probably way up in here. No, it doesn't look like it. No. 
Okay, that's okay though. Yeah. So we still have the powerful hum, which I thought I had gotten rid of, luckily. But uh, apparently not. So, uh, in terms of what's left in this radio, we only have this capacitor. It's a beautiful looking capacitor. That's it, really. How come you're humming? Well, that's going to be a mystery that we're going to have to try to solve. Okay, but you know what? Could have to do with maybe what happened to this capacitor. We're still going to sort it out. What happened to this capacitor? I don't think I came across replacements at any point. So somebody just abandoned these? I don't get it. So that's another I don't get it area. Maybe that's what we should pursue. Now that I've done all this, i got a lot better idea of what's going on in this radio. I've, I've made enough mistakes now. i kind of got a grip on things. Maybe it's time to go back and try to sort this one out. That would be the plan for tomorrow. Okay, yes, definitely. You can hear the hum disappear when I cut the power. She's a-humming. Well, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Have a great day.